Today on VIP TV, a bit of boxing royalty, Chris Jenkinson, who I'll say, unfortunately announced his retirement earlier this week. Um, well, I say that because he got to 89 fights, and I remember at the start of the pandemic, um, a, fe- a thread on Facebook that Chris had where he was going to make sure he got to the 100 fights. What's made you decide to throw in the towel when you could have got there? You could, you, I think you had 11 fights in 2019, so a year of boxing and you would have got to the 100. Yeah, definitely. That was, last year was, was the year that I was going to get there, Steve. Um, with, with what's going on with the pandemic and stuff, it's uh, it's not as it is. It's not what it seems. It's not what it used to be. Uh, it, it you know it used to be enjoyable going to these shows and and, and meeting all the lads there and stuff like. And uh, it doesn't. It, I don't think it's going to get back to normal as it used to be. You know, with all the all the away lads in the changing rooms and meeting all the guys and stuff. It's it's just not the same anymore. So that that's all. What's gone on this year is, and and last year's as. That's that's the biggest biggest reason why I've I've called a day to it really. I mean, how long did it take you to come to that decision? Because it's a big decision. Although eighty nine fights sounds a lot, you know, people who know boxing will get that you could have get to hundred fights easily because uh, you know how to look after yourself. You know when to take. You, you know you know how to play the game. You know how to take a walk. You know when to have a fight. You know, you know it perfectly. So that, that's what I'm saying. It's quite upsetting, really, that you've done it so close after what you've given to the sport. Yeah. You know, I, I'll miss every every minute of it. You know, it's uh, it was an hard... What, what, what I did, you know, being a journeyman, you know, it, it was an hard thing to do, you know. And it's just, there's a skill to it. It's not just get in there and, and take the shots. You've got you've to learn how to faint, slip and slide by, by the time because, you know, every second counts in there, especially... If you're an away fighter, because you, you you're out there every week and you're coming up against the top lads, you know so, some of the guys I fought like, you know just a, a, a few off the top of my head, uh, J, JJ Metcalf, yeah. Ted Chief and Denton Vassell, Reese Cartwright, Mason Cartwright, De, Darren Tetley, you know the, the list is endless, you know and you know, I hope I hope I give you know a good account of myself to, against some of these guys um, and sometimes I, I more than held me on, which you know. You know, it, which were great with with you know the, the capacity I was in the ring with. So, you know, I, I enjoyed every minute, like I said, Steve, and I, I'll miss it. I, I really will miss it. Yeah, I think it was three Commonwealth champions: uh, Metcalf, Vassell, and um, it was Wilson, one of the Scottish kids, Docker, Craig Doherty. I think Craig Doherty, yeah, the Scottish kid. Fought for the world title. Cheeseman was a British champion, and I had a quick look on box rec, and I counted really quickly, so I might be able to figure out. I think it was 49 fighters you fought who had a zero, who were unbeaten at the time you fought them. One or two you might have fought twice, but there was a zero. You got in the ring and then 89 fights, 49 I think it was, we'll call it 50 it sounds nicer, had a zero next to their name. That, that's undoing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think I, think I, I boxed John Thane. You know, everybody knows in the boxing maybe. circuit. John Thane, uh, four times I boxed John. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, you know, we get we get on. You know, we're always messaging each other and uh, and wishing each other well and stuff like that. So, you know, the, the box, the boxing community as one. Well, you know, it's like yourself, Steve. You, you know, you are keeping. You know, I fought. I fought when this year what passed. Well, last year what passed, and uh, and this year, you know, it's it's just it just shows that you know when I did announce the retirement, all all the support I was getting and. Yeah. and uh, the messages and things like that. it was overwhelming, and it took me it took me ages to read through all the messages and stuff like that. Uh, but but it's great, you know. I thought I thought with a forgotten man to be honest, but you know, it sort of opened. It sort of took something off my shoulders announcing it, and uh, I feel like I can I can crack on with something else now. If you get what I mean. Yeah. So what is it you're going to do? I know you mentioned on um, I think it was Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking at becoming a ref? Is that something you're considering? If you can get the chance, because it seems I've spoke to a, you're the third professional I know of. Uh, well, I know two are trying are getting nowhere, and you're the third I know that uh, who's retired who, who are thinking of trying that route. Have you spoke to the board at all, or have you given any encouragement? I'd, uh, I, I sent Les Potts uh, from the Central area. I just sent him a, a, just a quick message on uh, on Facebook just to see what what the protocol sort of thing was. Um, 
and he said, like, currently with what's going on and stuff, um, it's the same, you know, it's there's a, there's a waiting list, a bit of a backlog. And there's, there's obviously there's not many shows going on with, with what's happening. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, there's a lot of options out there. Um, so, so hopefully, eventually, but I'll, I'll get something, I'll get something, yeah. You've got, to give, you, you've got to stay in the game in some capacity, I'm sure. You know, you spoke at the start of the interview about how much you love being in the dressing room, that's part of it, where if you was behind closed doors now, you'd be in a bubble, you'd be in a dressing room by yourself, and you wouldn't see your mates who are also on the B side of the card. So, you know, you, you're obviously going to miss a lot of the camaraderie, so I'm sure you must want to stay involved in some capacity. Yeah, definitely. Like, like I said before, Steve, it's... Um... Like with with the bubble thing and the testing and all that, it's not it's not what it seems anymore, and it isn't. Um, I don't think it will be for a long time. So, I, like, yeah, I, I will definitely stay in it, you know, to some capacity. I'd like I'd like to do the ref inside of it, um, but if not, there's plenty of other options out there. Um, you know, I've, it's not I've not long been retired now. It's, it's been a couple of days or something. So, no, I, I'll really give it a thought and. Uh, I'm, I'm, it, a lot of doors are opening for me, really. Uh, I'm getting a lot of messages about help, uh, you know, trying to stay in sports, not just boxing, or maybe you know, going helping out a football club, doing the strength side of things and stuff. And uh, just, I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, there's a lot of options though, so I've got a lot to think about. Yeah, what was um, your best night as a pro? Well, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot though. There's, um, I probably can't just give you a, an answer right now, but just off the top of my head. I, I, boxed for the central, I boxed for the central area, yeah. Uh, which I, a lot of people had me had me up after five rounds, and then I, I got um, I just got flattened. <laughs> just one of them, you know, straight on the button, just got flattened. Um, but that's you know, I wanted to, I'd, I'd have loved to fight for an English title, you know, win it, but you know, just to fight for it at the level I was at, that'd have been the icing on the cake, really. But. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had a great career. I've boxed at, you know, um, I boxed on the Anthony Crawler undercard against the Linares at the MEN Arena, going going out to a, you know, a, a decent crowd. You know, I, we're only a, I were on a couple of fights before Anthony Crawler. Um, I've also fought on the Ricky Burns undercard uh, at the Hydro Arena, Josh Warrington undercard at, at the Leeds Leeds Arena, Leeds first direct, I think. Uh, so there's yeah, there's you know, there's been a lot of. I've had a lot of good good memories though, and, and and you know they'll be there forever. So it's it's been brilliant. Remember the artist if Daniel win well? <laughs> you know, I kept I kept trolling him on Twitter, but he he blocked me. I said, "Come on, if you can't beat an English journeyman, are, are, are you going to go on and, and, and progress in your career?" Like so. <laughs> yeah, I was there that night. That was that was, I mean, it was the last time I saw you box actually myself in the flesh that night. I think it was. I have to check it in a minute, but I think that was the last time I saw you box. Who was the best you shared a ring with? Well, you got out the ring and you thought, you you know, bloody hell, you said to your trainer or said to your manager, whoever it was, Kevin or whoever it was manager, I've earned my money tonight, where you sat in that dressing room and you thought, oh, you know. Right, so there's a, there's a couple. I'll just, I'll just name a couple. The one that really opened my eyes, Steve, was Adam Little, the ex-English yeah. champion. Yeah, I know. That. Yeah. yeah, he's had a lot of injuries. Been in and out of the ring. I think he might have still only lost one fight or might not be unbeaten. I'm not sure. He hasn't lost. Yes, he, uh, he, uh, he, I think it was. I think I was that, one win, one loss, and one draw. Yeah, then, and, and that's why I just looked at it. I think he was four or five and zero at the time. I think he was five. He was five and all then, that and with two stoppages. Yeah, and uh, that that was the Derry Matthews and Anthony Crawler British title fight at the Oldham. Oldham Marina, Oldham Sports Centre. Um, that that really, I could have walked away after that fight, but that me and Alex Matvianko went back to the gym after that fight, and we thought, right, we're in the we're in the pro game here. If I'm going to be boxing out of the away corner, we've got to, we've got to drill defenses, movement, head movement, everything you need to be to be a quality journeyman away fighter, whatever people want to call it. Um, but yeah, we drilled, 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 and drilled weeks, weeks, months on end, and uh, that's you know that's that's what got me through the, the, these tough fights um, against the, the the top quality operators out there. So yeah, you know, I'm st I've still got my looks, you know, I've still got my brain in, in my head and stuff. So like I say, I, I, you know, I, I have no regrets about my career. Um, 
just just one 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 small one, not getting to that hundred, but that's that's just out of my hands. Uh, but yeah, all good, all good memories. Well, we, we, you know, as I say, it hurts you not to get to the hundred club, being that close. And as I say, it would take you twelve months to knock it off, and convince you know that's that's all it would take you. Maybe less if there was a full schedule of fights. Well, you know, a full schedule would do it in twelve months. Was there anything in the gym that when you went back to training where you thought, hold on here, I've lost half a yard here? So, sorry, Steve, is that is that when I, after, well, sorry, I didn't hear you properly. You know, obviously you could have got to the 100 club if you wanted to, you know, it might have taken you 12 months, but over the last few months, have you gone back to the gym to train and has there been anything that made, made you think, I've lost a little bit over this, during the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, so the gym's shut, didn't they? And so I stayed training. I've got a bit of a gym set up in uh, in my back garden, uh, a bit of a shed with with a with a bag in and a squat rack and stuff like that. Um, and I was still training as well as you know t- trying to get some some bits of work in and uh, doing my house up. So I, I was on with other things and trying to train. And yeah, t- towards the end of last year. I started to do, started to have a real think about you know my age. Well, I'm, I'm 38 in May. That that was a, a big a big uh, factor in in the decision. Uh, there's other things like the timing and the movement and stuff. When when I would even just tap in the bag in the back the other day, it's, you know, my, my feet don't move as fast as they was was a couple of years ago. Uh, the timing doesn't seem there anymore. So, like, as, as you know, as, as people in the game know, it's, uh, Especially it's, a, tough, it's, a, it's a tough sport to be in, Steve. And um, you, can't, you can't play at it because you can get hurt. And everybody knows one, one punch can win a fight, but also one punch can change your life. So I've, I've made the right decision, I think. And what are you doing apart from boxing? You, you, I know you work, you're pretty busy with work, aren't you? What is it you do? I do well. I do bits and bats of all sorts. I do driveways. Um, I, I put me on to anything really. So just just what whatever's about, I can do. Um, but yeah, a bit. I've, I have been busy. Um, so there's. I'm not. I'm not struggling financially or anything. Um, so yeah, it's, it's time to crack on with something else and stuff like that, and, and and find something that suits me. Do you think? Me just final question before I let you go. Using your experience of being around boxing. Do you think if um, small hall boxing doesn't return this year, we're going to lose a lot more fighters, not just the journeyman who, who is the crucial, um, but also kids that might be, say, who aren't going to be the greatest, but might be five and five or six and zero who sell tickets. Um, they could be lost to the sport because suddenly they're out making three, 400 quid a week working and the wife might say, well, you're not going back to boxing to earn 1,200 quid. You know, when... I was talking about this the other day, Steve, to someone, and I said, you know, I think uh, boxing, boxing's got, you know, there's a lot's going to happen with it in the next, in the next few months. I think we are going to lose a lot of fighters. I think, uh, I think Ibra has called it a day as soon as yeah. you know, the first lockdown. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think they're just going to start to topple now, um, which is a shame. You know, we we held the sport up many times. You know, with with the the late calls and, and the late, you know, coming in at late notice and stuff like that. But as, as like, like I've just mentioned, you know, th- they would have been on with other things as well. Maybe, maybe they've gone into full-time work, maybe gone into training people, you know, they might have lost lost touch with it, with the training and, and the dieting and stuff. I, th- I think I've seen a lot who, who have put a lot of weight on and stuff. And it's, it's a shame to see because it, I think people haven't seen the half of what, what this pandemic could have will have done by it finishes hopefully so yeah I think I think I think we're in for a shock soon and I think it's going to be a real slow burner to get to get boxing back to what it was if it does get there because um, yeah it's you know there's a there's a big eye opener for boxing soon and um, just hope it gets back to normal fingers crossed yeah and then before we let you go obviously you know forget your record you show journeyman can box you, what you can do with your feet your ear you avoid shots what made you become a journeyman instead right. of you know, uh, trying go trying to get on the title trail and then maybe if it didn't work I can go on the road 
What made you do yeah, it but, early in your career? Because you know you was like a bit of win one, lose one at the start. But you know, then then you went down the. You seemed looking at your record. You went down. You then decided to go down that path. Yeah, it started like I think. Again, I, I was late to the party, sort of thing. I um, I didn't turn pro till I was uh, twenty six, twenty seven. So. Like you, 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 mate. If you've got younger mates and you turn pro younger, they, they all they're all up for it, getting a beer and, and watching your watching your box and that, and going out on the nights out after and stuff, which is a part of it when you're a ticket seller. So what it was, it well, it, it was I was 27. My mates were around the same age. They're all having kids. Some were getting married. Stuff like that. They've all got they've all got things to do. So when it comes to selling tickets, people were saying, "Yeah, we'll go and stuff like," that. and then. And then it, they don't end up going. So you, you, you potentially should be selling under 250 tickets. You end up selling 50. And then you don't get a wage from it. So it's just, it's just that, that, that were the main like, decision to go on the road. But I, I'm glad I did go on the road because you, you're doing the sport without the stresses. And, 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 and you, can fight, you can fight on... It, it, I've shown that you can fight on, on the top shows and, you know, and mix with these people like the Anthony Crullers, the Linareses. You know, I, I saw Scadella Hoyer at that show and he, he put the thumbs up to me and Alex Bianco and it, that, that, were, that was a shock as well, you know, because he was one, one of my favourite fighters as, you know, growing up. So, yeah, there's some great memories and uh, well, it was all from the back the other night. So Oscar's watched Sorry. your fight. Oscar De La Hoya's watched your ringside. And he would you know what? And someone like Oscar, if he's watching you, Box, he would have appreciated what you were doing and would have seen what you can do. Oh, definitely, 100 percent He'll know the game inside out, won't he? Um, just like just like John Pegg. John Pegg gave us a call the other night. I'm I'm close with John in the boxing game. I did did six years with him as uh, he's, he was my manager. And um he said it at the beginning of your career, Chris. If, if someone said to you, you're going to go on, fight for the Central Area title, win win a couple of Masters titles, uh, box box on world title undercards, box live on TV, box in Denmark, in Europe, and and stuff like that, you'd have snapped it with both hands. And I, I would I would have done, you know, I would I would I would I'd do it all again if I could. If I could run back my career again, I'd do it all again because I've had some great highlights uh, boxing on the Ricky Burns undercards, and then. Getting in the crowd and having a beer with a few lads and that, you know, just not only had one or two, like, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's just all great. And looking, looking down at the ring and thought, I've just boxed in that ring, and I actually got a win on that night against Mark Kerr, and I was first on, and it, it, I, I was first on at about four o'clock. So I, I were out and changed and showered by by five o'clock and sat in the crowd with a beer in my hand. <laughs> oh, well. great memory. All I can say is thanks for everything you've done for, for British boxing. Um, you know, you're one thing that it wouldn't survive without the, the, the breeder journeyman that there is, you know, that, you know, people who maybe are on the outside looking in won't appreciate that. But uh, thanks for everything you've done for British boxing. And, and it's important that someone like you, in my opinion, isn't lost to the sport. And if I was a border control, I'd be all over you to get you trained up as a referee. And let's hope they... Um, that Les helps you out there when um, the pandemic's over. Definitely. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot, Steve. And um, I hope to see you all soon and people who I've met in the game and stuff like that. It's, uh, I've met some friends for life. Um, it's been brilliant. You know, I've, I've got so many memories and I, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I, I went through every every part of my career. Just just one re little regret and that, not making the 100. That's the only that's the only regret I have. But as you say, great memories. Yeah. Thanks very much, Chris, for speaking to us. Thanks a lot. Thank you to you, Steve. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you more than anything. For all boxing, info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.